As I promised, but I got to want to show you a little show and tell today here as, as I walk through this. But thanks for coming to our press conference. My name is Tom Lautzen, and I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Preco Electronics. And I'm really excited to talk to you about uh, a new product announcement that we're happy to feature at the show today. Um, and that is the Side Defender 2 product. And, um, it's really the Side Defender 2 represents the next generation of Preco's side collision avoidance solution for heavy and medium trucks. So that's something we've been doing for almost 20 years now, and we're really happy to take it to the next level with the Side Defender 2. But before I get into the product, I kind of like, I'd like to start with a story that has more to do with why did we do this product. Um, and it, it gets to the heart of what we do at Preco. So I want to talk about uh, the Ghost Bike Memorials. Anybody familiar with the Ghost Bike Memorials in the cities and what they represent? Mike? Mike, you want to tell us about what the Ghost Bike Memorials represent? Well, unfortunately, some people who ride bikes don't survive accidents. And so throughout your travels, you'll probably come across white bikes for the Ghost Bikes. Yes, and, and these white bikes, uh, are placed in intersections and what they represent is someone who's been killed at that intersection by a collision with a vehicle. And so they're very, a very somber a reminder of, of the consequences that can happen when what these are called vulnerable road users um, collide with a, with a car or, or even worse, a heavy truck. Um, unfortunately, we have several of these white bikes throughout Boise, Idaho, where, where Preco Electronics is. And one of them, even I, I'm aware of the of the of a high school uh, kid that was involved in the car that hit the bicycle. So to me, that's a very you know touchy story of why we want to try to do um, solutions that can help address this problem. And the problem is big. And this problem is, is getting worse throughout the world. When you um, when you look at what are called struck by accidents with vulnerable road users, that would be pedestrians, bicyclists, motorcycles. It's on the rise in, in many cities around, around the world, not going down. And so governments and municipal municipalities around the world have taken notice of this problem and they're, they're demanding action and in some cases um, passing regulations that are requiring driver assistance systems um, or side guards, you may have heard about side lateral protection devices and things of that nature. So they're demanding solutions to this problem. In North America, we have what's called the Vision Zero Initiative. Has anyone heard about Vision Zero Initiatives? And we have over 25 cities that participate in Vision Zero. And that started in Sweden, but it's come to the United States. Vision Zero um, in, in terms of it visualizes a future where we have zero accidents in our urban areas due to commercial vehicles. And we really think that is possible uh, with a combination of training, safety, technology, and things of that nature. So another important thing, another important concept of the Vision Zero initiatives is there are no accidents. Um, there are no accidents, there's only crashes. And crashes are avoidable. In fact, we don't we don't see on the news that the American Airlines had an accident and flew an airplane into a mountain. That, that vernacular is just not allowed in aviation. So why should it be allowed in, in vehicle safety? Um, so that's a real concept of this Vision Zero initiative. Um, likewise, in Europe, um, and in, particularly in Germany, they're moving to regulate um, this type of technology, which they call side turn assist. And that is protecting vulnerable road users in urban settings where they're making right turns, particularly the most dangerous. So given Preco, given that's the problem, and many uh, countries are interested in solving that, Preco, with its over 20 years of experience in doing side collision avoidance systems, decided to take that problem on head on. And we were proud to announce the first, or the, the next iteration of solving that problem in what we call the Side Defender 2. Um, the Side Defender 2 is a radar-based collision avoidance system 
that would install, like in this picture, would install uh, particularly on the passenger side of a truck or a bus and monitor that blind spot, monitor that critical blind spot on the side of the truck for any kind of vulnerable road users that move into that side blind zone. And then notify the driver via audible or visual interface if there are, uh, like a bike enters that blind zone. So what's really new about Side Defender 2 is we've added this feature we call the, the VRU warning mode or the vulnerable road user more warning mode. And it operates, this new mode operates when the vehicle is moving from zero to 20 miles an hour in an urban setting. So if you think about the worst, the worst case uh, use case, it's typically a truck coming to a, an intersection to make a right turn in a crowded urban environment, and a bicycle approaches off that. Uh, a bicycle approaches from the rear into that side blind spot. Now that that driver, if they're distracted, might not even see see that bicyclist come up into their blind spot. With the um, with the side defender, it'll actually warn the driver. It'll, it'll provide a visual alert when something comes into the into the zone, and if the driver initiates a turn signal, it'll provide a, an audible alert to the driver. So, really simple type of uh, user interface, but very effective. So, the net result is is warning, warning uh, an operator driver before they make that turn when there's a, a vulnerable road user entering into their blind spot. Now the product, it adds that new feature on top of the existing feature that the side defender already had, which was really more your, your highway speed lane change assist. So that's monitoring that blind spot. When you think about driving on a freeway, uh, monitoring the blind spot for lane change and warning the driver if they make a lane change and there's a car in their blind spot. So really what we get, what we get with the Side Defender 2 is really get a two for one benefit. We get the benefit of the vulnerable road user protection when operating in an urban environment. And we also get the benefit of having a, a lane change assist product when you're operating at highway speeds. Um, and so to do both of those things, one of the big challenges that we had in, from the technology perspective was that we have to warn the driver of these vulnerable road users and, and, and blind spot threats, but we, but we also can't um, so we, we can't have false alerts based on fixed stationary things like parked cars or park benches or guardrails and things of that nature that you find in a cluttered urban environment. So to achieve that, we added intelligent technology to the product. By taking the speed of the truck, we can actually ignore all the stationary clutter, if you will, that the radar sees but only alert the driver on moving threats that come into that side blind zone. So the resulting benefit of that is we have a very effective warning assist product, but it doesn't provide, it doesn't have those nuisance alerts that are going off on things that the driver doesn't care about. So that, that's a real important part of what, what makes this technology so good. Um, so that's, that's really where the, the main benefits of, of what the system gives you is it gives, the, it gives the drivers those protections for when they're making slow speed urban turns and urban, urban maneuvers to protect those bicyclists, but also gives them that uh, on-road lane change assist for when they're operating at highway mode. So we have two kits really to make it easy um, uh, we, we have a kit that's oriented towards retrofitting existing fleets, and we have a kit that's oriented towards working with our OEMs, our bodybuilders and upfitters, um, that would manufacture a new truck with this system. 
for the retrofit older vehicles, we have a kit that has a GPS that gives the truck speed to the radar via the GPS. So it doesn't have to connect to the truck's CAN bus. And for the for our OEMs and our outfitters, we have a CAN connect kit that connects up to the truck's CAN bus, and gets a truck speed, turn signal, and all that information without having to have the GPS. So we have two kits, one for retrofit, one for um, our OEMs and, and new trucks. So we really have the market covered. If a fleet wants to go all in on this type of technology, we can do the old and the new. Um, these systems are uh, kind of available. We'll start shipping these next month, and uh, they'll be available through all of our OEMs, upfitter partners, as well as all of our uh, dealers in the Apple market. Um, so that's it. That, that's what the Site Defender 2 does. The bottom line we look forward to is seeing less of those, uh, hopefully seeing less of those ghost bike memorials around cities around uh, around the world, and also making our freight trucking operations safer uh, for our users. So, thanks for listening. I want to open up the floor. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. <laughs> Okay, so Lee asked the question of roughly how long it would take to retrofit and install this. Um, the, kit, the kit consists of the, the radar, which mounts on the side of the truck, it comes with a 10 meter body harness, um, and the impact display. I would say a, a typical installation, a couple hours. The beauty of the GPS kit is they don't have to connect to the can, so they just power it ground and connect the, and wire it up. So maybe two hours as they get faster. Question, any, any other questions? Do you have an adapter for the thing? So Steve, uh, Steve has asked, do we have an adapter for the trucks J1939? Yeah. Um, we provide the, the body cable has breakout uh, can wires that are basically a harness that breaks out okay. and there's spare wires that can connect to the, oh. and we can add various connectors. Okay. Are the, uh, are the I'm so sorry. Are the sound alerts like on a you know, different mode, like they can be managed, controlled, yeah. voice level of the sound alert? Yeah, the volume? Yeah. Yes. Um, so the question was the volume of the display. It has five, it has five, five volume settings. And then the speaker is actually quite, quite capable. But, and the driver can't disable it? You know, like it can be programmed to allow the driver to, they can't disable. Um, the default is they can change the, um, the volume, but they can't disable it. But we can uh, program them to where they can change the volume as well. Okay. <coughs> Question: When you say they ignore stationary objects, what if there was a uh, passenger, a person standing waiting on a bus, would it ignore them, or does it recognize it as a human shape? So the, that's a very good question. So if it's a the question is, does it ignore a human that was standing? The Yes, it, it would not. It would not alert on a human if they were, say, standing on the sidewalk, uh, because they're not moving. Now, what it, because what it's what it's trying to assess is threats that are moving towards and into the truck. So if you're if you're standing completely stationary, it's not going to alert on you. Yes, sir. Hey, um, would you a logistical question, when you're having the retrofit done, so for fleets, where do they have that done? Who does the installation? And how does how is the quality of that installation ensured? So the, I think the question is, um, if a fleet were to do an installation, who, who typically does that installation? Yeah, is that, do you guys send a crew? Do they take it into a... Uh, who actually we have, that's a good question, uh, Sean. So we have a couple of different options. We have a we have a network of authorized dealers throughout the country um, who we work with that have you know, various service centers, and um, we also have um, train the trainers. We have a, a, quite a few of our fleet customers have their own installers. So in that case, we typically send out our training technicians who will train them on the proper installation. 
and then they'll do either they'll do it themselves or we have authorized dealers with service centers. Now, will the fleets typically buy directly from you, or do they go through their outfitter? You know, at, at, as they're at finishing their truck. That the, the fleets buy from us or through outfitters, and we have both situations. Okay. So we have a, a lot of our fleet customers like to like to purchase these products as an option and with the new truck, so installed. So. Um, Gosh, we work with Utila Master, we work with McNeilis on waste and construction trucks, we work with Altec, Terex. Um, you know, it's, it's nice if they can get the option from the factory pre installed ready to go. And just a quick follow up on the installation if you do the train the trainer, how do you ensure that that installation is done properly? Because, I mean, that, that, that's a safety concern in terms yes. of the equipment working. Yeah, typically. So how do we ensure that that, ins that that installation is done properly? We, it's a really good question. It is really important. And so the um, we have specifications. Okay. We have uh, specifications on mounting location, mounting windows, keep away zones. We have, we have a rigid set of specifications that we try to certify our dealers. Here's what you need to do. Um, and there's very clear instructions and manuals and all of that. And we have to, yeah, we have to somewhat rely on their policy as well. Got it. <coughs> Doing it. That is really important. Thank you. What's the span of the detection? Oh, thank you, Stacy. I meant to mention that. So, Stacy asked, what's the span of the detection zone? The, the side defender 2. Um, covers approximately 30 feet, so 15 feet in each direction along from where it's mounted, um, and it covers the adjacent lane, so about 12 feet into the adjacent lane. Is that, that's the alert zone. Thank you for mentioning Good question. Any other questions? What's the price? Um, a typical system, it's, 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 it's been um, targeted to have a install price of, let's say, $1,200 to $1,400 installed for the whole system. And it's still warranty. Excuse me? The warranty on it. Um, we have a five-year warranty on our uh, on all our radar systems. So we really stand behind. We they build with highest quality. Um, the display is two years. Good question. Warranty. So is it durable in all weather conditions? Truck washes. Is it durable in all weather conditions? We love that question because we've been doing um, hardened radar for off-road and on-road for about 20 years so yes our we, we we put these products on OEM machines um, like John Deere and Caterpillar machines and other off-road machines and many other types of OEM trucks so it's hardened for shock and vibe and electrical and, and uh, designed to meet the very stringent requirements of, of those type of OEMs. Good question. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Really appreciate your time. If you have any, if you have any questions, all our contact information is in the, in the press materials. Or in the press materials. All right, see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.